Hey, what's up everybody? Cedric and CJ here. CRS and commentary. We'll be reviewing SmackDown Friday night live as it was, allegedly as point. But let's get on with this, all right? So this starts off. Randy Orton, he comes out and the fans just love him. He get, he he's giving dap, giving pounds, talking to people, interacting with the kids. And he says that he missed being on in, a, in the SmackDown ring. And then he welcomes everybody to this Friday night SmackDown. He is absolutely over the fans were singing parts of his song and stuff and and that, you know i mean i mean he's over right the, <laughs> the, you know they, they chant his name and he says that the one person in his business that he can trust is cody rhodes and it doesn't sit right with him that he's teaming up with roman reigns and randy asked cody to come on now it's like he's calling him out but trying to be nice about it so he does a good job then cody comes out he's dressed for banking and rejecting loans people need. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's a nice suit, just the skinny pants they don't, don't work for me. So once Cody's in the ring, Randy mouths for the music to cut. Cody does the babyface intro with the cheap pop, and then after the fans chant Randy, Cody does his, what do we want to talk about? So Cody takes notice of the optics of things and asks Randy would rather going on his situation would you rather be a fool or a coward and that's a, a tough spot choice. to be yeah it's a hard choice so randy has to agree to be the to be the fool cody talks about roman keeping his word in various ways and and talking him and you know it, it said you know hey look gotta take his word right and the fans are chatting you know over the counter well otc anyway <laughs> <laughs> so yeah original tribal chief yeah we get it but just saying you know gonna get out Tylenol and Dayquil yep <laughs> and then Cody says the bloodline situation needs to be killed Randy cites that it's no problem unless Cody makes it a problem and I'm like okay there was a lot to read into that making sure we put it in Cody because if they're gonna do a heel turn for any one of them it's gonna be on Cody Cody's shoulders Coldies, um, <laughs> colders. Uh, so Kevin Owens, he come out and whoo! Right now, it's two well-known turncoats and one consummate babyface. Because Cody hasn't turned yet; he hasn't been a heel yet. So before anything can be said, the bloodline come out. The fans are not happy, but they won't try to drown out Solo this time. And then he's, you know, then he does the whole tribal chief heel thing of acknowledge me. And the fans chant OTC loudly and Solo says Cody should not, well he, well he needs to trust Roman Reigns because he'll need it. And the two people in the ring won't be any help. Solo points out that Cody's history with Kevin and Randy against the bloodline has never worked. Solo tells Oklahoma to shut up, gaining some cheap heat. And, uh, Kevin tells him to shut up. No one cares about him or wants to listen to him. And then I thought he was issuing a six-man tag team match, but no, it's, he wants Solo and Jacob against him and Randy. So, okay. So there we get, uh, after that, you got Naomi versus Bailey, and we, we were skipping through that. A few flubs here and there, but as we skipped through it, we just saw little things, and then Bailey wins with a diving elbow drop and pin. You know, I mean, like a giant Uno card. Yeah. Uno. The, Uno. The draw four. That's what she looked like. She's like the draw four card. <laughs> yep. Um, so maybe Bailey will lose to Jax again in a heated battle, leaving both down, and Tiffany can cash in and pin Jax. Or Bailey. If Bailey, it would be better for the heels if Bailey win, and Tiffany could cash that in for. Nia Jax. She could. But then, you know, new rivals. This this would be new rivals that would leave SmackDown top woman floundering. Because let's say Tiffany does cash in and then pin Jax and become the women's champion. They're going to be at each other, right? It's going to be two heels that no one gives a damn about. But Tiffany's on the cusp of a baby face. Because the, the fans are liking her. And... But if it does, you know, like I said, it is going to leave Bailey floundering in the wind. She'll have nobody, you know. So 
I, I, whatever they do with this, they're going to do it. <laughs> so next, now it took a bit. It took a bit. But Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade El Idolo. Now he's not El Idolo here, but it's in his music. Mm-hmm. And th- this is Cedra's first time seeing Andrade and, well, Andrade and his intro. His intro was nice. Understands the the basic premise of pageantry. Had the gear perfectly located in the center of the stage. The light and the and the the, the Titan Tron stuff going on. It was great. See, speaking about that, I had to got to do a call back for Randy Orton when he came out. He started just walking down the aisle. He had a pause, and he you could see his hands like, okay, hold up, slow it down, buddy, slow it down. Mm-hmm. He went back and waited for the camera and everything to catch up to him. He, he, literally, that was him talking to him about the situation. He, he's walking to the ring. Well, well, bring it back, bring it yeah, back. Yeah, he was producing himself. You could see it. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, that dude looks like his damn daddy is crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. Um, I'm usually down on Randy because I know that he they made him the unbeatable guy. And that's always bored me when there's somebody that's unbeatable no matter what. That that has always bored me the whole Kogan effect. Mm-hmm. I've always been annoyed by that. Um, so next we get um, in the back. Andrade talks to L.A. Knight, saying that he lost Andrade's respect by not wanting to shake his hands. He didn't say in Mexico or anything like that. He was like, you know, where I'm from. Yeah. And Andrade's trying to talk. It, it, it's he just got. He is understandable. As long as he is talking slowly, he has to very much enunciate. Yes. So he's enunciating. We got to do our part and listen. Ain't nothing wrong. People want to just, okay, I hear what you're saying because you just say it. No, it you, you know, he's trying. He's trying. Exercise and, your ears and listen. He is understandable. Yep. And so as night begins to respond, he gets blasted over the trunk by Carmelo Hayes. All in the heat. And I wrote, that was the best thing Hayes has done. I marked out for that. I loved it. That was just spot on perfect. And then Hayes says, I got something for you too. Come on. I'm like, oh, that right there was master heel stuff right there. Mm-hmm. I, I was like, man, this right here, I am glad and I'm exposing some stuff here. I am glad he's been being mentored by these two. Mm. He's being mentored. And I'm a t- look, this Carmelo Hayes, because he's learning to pro wrestle. I'm liking this. I'm liking him now. I actually want to see him in the ring now. Because before, no. I had nothing to do with that indie spot monkey jackwad. <laughs> But now he's pro wrestling. He ain't out there just doing moves and wasting what should be legit finishes. Right now, that's on WWE's part. Because this was good. Yeah. And then I had to note, Knight has to do something. So I'm writing this down. I'm Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. That's what I put because I knew what was coming up. So, so the match gets started. Andrade hit a... This was nice. He hit a buzz Sawyer slam from inside the ropes on the outside on Hayes. That was nice. That scoop power slam, buzz Sawyer slam. Um, I'm pulling names out your butt. Like I know who that is. So <laughs> I like that apron spot leading up to it because yeah. when they was out there, Hayes was still popping them in the head with punches and kicks. And kicks. It looked, that's literally, if you're in a fight, that's what you would do. Yeah, you're struggling. You're trying to not get hurt. Now, granted, you can see they were working punches and working kicks, but in real life, that's what you would do. I'm liking that. I'm, this is what I like. This. So Hayes hit a springboard capture DDT. Absolutely awesome, but it was for a two count. Hayes hit a nice suplex that transitioned to an ace crusher for a two count. Okay. Now, granted, those two should be finishing moves. They should, in the 80s, done. 70s, wouldn't even be thought of. Yeah. 
So then Hayes hit a counter avalanche ace crusher for two count. Yeah, that should have been the end of the match. That should have been it. I wrote freaking, I wanted to write a lot. I just wrote freaking lovely. It was beautiful. It was. It was beautiful. The fans are chanting, chanting, holy, holy. Yeah. I was like, okay, they, they, they're cutting off the holy shit part. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she means, well, he means holy spit. But holy, holy spit. Oh, commercial. Um, Andrade hit the spinning back elbow. Hayes rolled to the outside and ring. Literally, that what a a good heel would do back in the day. He got popped. He rolled out the ring to evade the pin attempt. Great job. LA Knight comes in on the count of five. Knight tries to get Hayes, but Hayes darts into the ring where Andrade argues with Knight. It almost like Andre went to Hayes' defense. Uh-huh. Hayes shoves Andrade into Knight, rolls up Andrade for a three count, and then darts from the situation. Yeah. He'll go, him gone. Like I did my part. I'm done. Now, he keep this up, and if he keep up heel wins, dirty tactic wins, cheap wins like this, literally, he could be like, and that was done by H-I-M. There you go. Who was H-I-M? That's what he wants to call himself. When you look at his little video thing, it says H-I-M, him. Oh, okay. It's him. Him did it. It could... There's so if he was a baby face, that would be that's what would be said. He would if they do it properly, he could be the next Eddie Guerrero in terms of the the cheating baby face. Okay. Him did it, that would be that would be on the signs. It'd be beautiful. It'd be just right there. I can get down with this guy. I can get down. He needs a little more pro wrestling and because some of those should be legit finishes. But I get it. But it ties things up three and three. That's six match. The first two, yeah. The third one, yeah, a little better. Fourth, all right. Fifth, I'm seeing some magic. Sixth, I'm like, okay, I'm there. Sounds like the multitude of evil Tanahashi matches. What they're doing, what they're doing is showing you right in your face how it was done in the territories. Wrestlers would go against each other once a day, sometimes twice, depending upon what towns they were in. That's what they would do. And you're seeing this, but it's on a weekly basis, sometimes bi-weekly. This is Carmelo in advanced training school. I mean, advanced advanced training school so this is good Carmelo he can talk but his ring work needed some serious help Andrade is doing it Knight is doing it so this he's thrown in the deep end and I'm, I'm enjoying this but after the match Andrade and Knight they argue Knight extends his hand Andrade walks off like no I ain't got nothing to do with you I'm done. And then backstage, Cody wants to talk to Kevin, and Kevin refuses to talk. He's like, we're not doing this. We're not going to do this right now. Kevin walks off. You know, he's, he's like, I ain't got nothing. So Kevin, he tells Cody, don't come out there. I don't care. Don't, don't come out there. Stay back here. Orton tells Cody, look, the tongue has come in. Come out there and help. <laughs> I'm going to try to talk to Kevin. And so Cody, I'm like, man. I'm like, what's going on? Because Randy's, Randy's working some sort of angle. And if Kevin is leaving to go to AEW at the end of the year, it's going to be, you know, they got to f- have something to write them off. You know, you got to find something to write them off. Something that's some kind of injury angle. And then he leaves, he goes to AEW. Kevin Owens is not advancing in his career he's a top guy Kevin Owens is a top guy but he's not being pushed to be an actual champion yeah for obvious reasons so that's yeah he doesn't have the body for it he doesn't have the look for it he's he can work you know 
still a bit too much indie in him, but that's his thing. And it's like nobody else does that thing and it doesn't look phony. So I think he's all right. Um, he can talk. Damn, he can talk. So, and I think it's, I think it's craptacular to go, well, can he talk? No, because Sami Zayn can talk better. So since Sami Zayn is, a, is better on the mic, Kevin Owens is not a good talker. I ain't going to lie. I think it takes an idiot to do that. I think it takes an idiot to say someone can't do something because somebody else does it better or do it better in your eyes. So, you know, it's just Kevin is not advancing here and he's going nowhere in AEW except money heaven and a few concussions and other injuries. Yeah. That's what he's going to get paid seven figures and he's going to be out for seven months. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. Seven figures, seven months. Every year, he's going to be hurt. Um, Meachin versus Piper Niven. I'm going to uh. let, you, let you get your stuff in. I'm going to let you have the flow. Just, just wait a minute. All right. I'm going to let you have the flow. Meachin hit a crucifix driver for a two count. And after Niven's shoulders were down, the referee started counting. And that was good. But it looked like Niven should almost broke her neck on that. I wasn't too happy with that. But Niven is lucky. She, females are that 5% collagen soft, a little more flexible. Actually, much more flexible than the guys. Squishy. So, yeah, squishy. She's, so she's just like a little squishy ball out there. And it made that move look really wicked. But, yeah, I, it took the ref a while to count, and I think maybe that could have been the end of the match. But the problem is Niv is the one that did the move to herself. Meechin ain't pulling nobody over, and no. they don't do the crucifix uh, driver or bomb right anymore. They just hold on, and the person just does a, a, a flat back bump, basically. You know, when it used to be you got them, and you look like you throw your arm and leg back so you can turn them over. It almost looked like some weird... Leg and arm lays hip toss. But they don't do that anymore. Um, Niven hit a spinning boss man slam for a two count. Niven hit the Michinoku driver two for a two count. Niven flung herself very late into the trash cans on the outside. Inside, Michin kicks Chelsea off the apron. Hit Gail Kim's finish on Niven and got the one, two, three. And Cedric, you can have the flow on all that you was thinking about that match. Go ahead, talk, woman, talk, speak up. Hush. Come on, so keep going. I first saw Niven, You're supposed to talk um, about the thing. You know what? What? Okay, 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 okay. Go ahead. Go I ahead. first saw Niven. I think it was the Battle at the Castle in Scotland. Is that what it was called. You, the first time you ever saw her was in WA. Okay, yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> so in this incarnation, it was the Battle of the Castle, and the same thing that was wrong then. Is wrong now. She's a big woman. Um, and undoubtedly, I'm sure she's strong, far stronger than the tiny women she's wrestling. But they keep having her do the stupid stuff. Oh, I'm gonna run and slam my hip into you. Oh, I'm gonna do this, the, the get on the, uh, uh, the, the turnbuckle and then do the backward slam, but I miss. And then, and, and, and then, what did you what did you say she did that was that was dangerous? We were talking about um, that crucifix driver. No, not that. Uh, talking about the spine, uh, Mick Foley running oh, and diving to the floor. Yeah, the uh, the uh, sunset flip or uh, standing senton attack. Yeah, she should be slinging these little girls around. She should be clotheslining and power bombing and every other bomb that you can think of and finishing them in short order this match being competitive is bull but she's not short and and thin thin and if that is your flavor attractive so she's not <laughs> they're not gonna let her shine yeah it's like look if that's a woman that you look at and say Okay, if you can't picture yourself sexually being with her, then she can't be a champion. 
That's about how it go. That's how sexist it is. Cause she can't. I couldn't have her in my company. Her being that big and getting beat by someone like Me Chin or anyone else that's little. Ain't no way. It now, just doesn't make sense. If they are to win, they have to be evasive. They've got to take her out rationally and logically. It's got to make sense. Misha, uh, she could Misha, have done it if she worked like worked the leg. She worked, worked the her arms, legs, something. no knees. She didn't try and keep her keep her off her feet. She wasn't trying to evade. You could tell, okay, I got my set list move. Let me get my stuff in, even if it looks like crap, and wouldn't take down Snoopy. That's exactly what the problem was. Because nothing that she did should have worked on Piper. Nope. None of that. And Piper, honestly, should be... I would not put her against Nia Jax. Because Piper can actually move. Nia can't do much. And I'm going to say it, like some others probably have, if not for The Rock, she wouldn't be where she is. Yeah. You know, she just... I can see the grand potential, but she doesn't unleash it. She ain't trying to really, really learn. She's going to do what she do, stay the way she's going to stay, and that's it. So I don't care to watch Nia Jax. And I'm sure as hell not going to watch somebody just so I can insult them. I think that's weak. Yeah. I, I, I got better things to do. I wish Niven could, could be allowed to do more. In NWA, she did more. You know, and that's, I think I saw her on some indie show, and I was like, this the same girl that's broken down to three moves in the WWE, really? Yeah. You're a fat girl, wrestle like a fat girl. How about you just wrestle like you were trained to wrestle? Exactly. Get in a weight loss program or something. I don't give a damn, just use her. She should be brutalizing these people. She mm -hmm. should, Nia shouldn't be there, and Piper should probably be the damn champion. You know? that get her some mic work if she needs it, help i don't know but just do it and if she can't i get it i get it she got to work she's working with chelsea why don't you have them going after the women tag team champions then because chelsea is a mid-card comedy act there you go she's female christian yep actually christian was actually good chelsea is mean girl lazy girl kind of thing yeah ah aggressive entitlement without doing anything aggressive <laughs> So she's now we get, loud. huh? She's just loud. Yeah. So main event, tag team match: Kevin Owens, Randy Orton versus the Bloodlines, Jacob Fatu, and Solo Sokoa. Okay. <clears throat> so this match served one purpose only. This was to bust Jacob down from the juggernaut he's been to show that he can be vulnerable to an extent, to an extent, but not be beaten. I don't know how they're going to work this match. Oh, not, not this match, but this, this um, Cody Roman against Jacob and Solo. I don't know how they're going to work that. That's next Saturday, 6 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time. Out West, it'll be, um, what, 3 or something like that? 6 o'clock. Yeah, early. 6 p.m. And Mountain Time should be about 5, I think. And some other places will be 4. <laughs> so, North Carolina and over, you got 6, and you got, what, just past the Appalachians and Kentucky and whatnot, you get about 4 to 3. <laughs> you know, like you that. get you get that five. going. I don't know. If you're in Hawaii, it'll be like, what, one or two? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Time zones, man. So we got, uh, so Owens and Jacob, they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and Solo orders the tag. Owens beat him down a little bit. Orton gets, in, gets the tag. Jacob asks for the tag, so Jacob versus Randy. And then Orton does the backdrop on the table on the outside, uh, the announce table. Jacob, he eats it. He just eats it. Throws the thing off like, man, I don't know what you're trying to do. And Orton takes a little too damn long. So Jacob got to look, got to stand with his thumb up his butt. And then Orton finally turns around. And then Jacob has to go after him in a 
clearly working way for even Jacob. And then Orton drops him on the table like three good times. And finally, Jacob's like, okay, man, I'm, I'm done. He holds yeah. his head and rolls off. Um, then Solo, he tries, and he takes the backdrop on the table. And then, let's see, after the break, both teams, they're about 50-50 when, uh, with both getting their stuff in. Then uh, Sokoa, he gets the knees up on the swanton by Owens. So then Kevin takes a long-term beat down and fights the tag, but Jacob stops him, then Solo stops him, and then he eventually gets the hot tag. Orton works on Solo, and then Jacob. Orton hits the green killer on Solo. Jacob distracts Orton, and Solo hits the Samoan drop to slow, to, to slow it down a little bit. Orton is somehow hurt and all beat up from one move mm-hmm. and tags in Owens, who hops down and does his run. That's the indie part. But it works for him. Runs around. He's hitting all his moves. He gets his stuff in, running around the ring. Solo falls in place and takes the swan time for a two count. And you even notice how, like, that looked weird. Yeah. When Kevin, what did he do? A uh, high kick or something? And Solo just sort of falls. He looks back and falls awkwardly. Yeah, he does a high kick, but it doesn't land anywhere near the head. It was, like, across the back shoulder area. And, and, and Solo falls out like he got clocked right between the eyes. He had the whole glassy eye look too while he was trying to fall and spot in, in place. Yeah. I was and, like, what what just happened here that <laughs> doesn't translate? Yep. And then uh so he takes the swan damn, curse of the move. Okay. So he takes so he uh takes a swan time, but it was just for a two count. He kicked out on his own. G O D run in and stop. Just stop. Mm-hmm. It, it just stop. They ready? They get to the the, the rope and then they, 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 they climb off. It's like, what was that? <laughs> so Cody comes in and he defe- and he defeats God by himself. Yeah. Orton got the Ace Crusher on top of Tonga in the ring. Jacob, the ref is down at this time. Something happened to his knee and he couldn't see stuff anymore. Yeah, somebody somebody fell into his leg and it like broke off and fell out in the ring or something. He had like it was gone. Yeah, his eyes stopped working when his leg got hit. And so it's like, my knee, I can't see what's happening. <laughs> Even though he was in the ring, kind of looking at everything that happened. So Orton hit the H crutch on Tamatanga. Jacob hit the suicide dive on Cody. Jacob stops Owens with a few super kicks, well, actually foot jabs. And then Solo, he got the pinfall on Owens after that. There you go. After the match, Owen, uh, Owens, uh, they, you know, it seemed begrudging. He hugs Cody as Randy tries to keep the peace. And then I'm like, we all see it coming, but how is it going to happen? How's mm-hmm. it going to go down? There's going to be a turn. And, I, and, and, you know, Randy in his past has always spoken up really high, really well, really strong about somebody. And then turn on them. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's always his thing. He's the best person. Without him, I wouldn't have this. It's crusher. <laughs> oh, he's hurt. No, Randy, don't. Kick in the head. And then the dude's all injured and whatnot. Yeah. Uh. So this um, I, I I still have seen nothing from Sokoa. Sokoa is trying. Solo, they're working with them. I'm look. You're not gonna see what you want to see. Never, ever. It's not gonna happen. Anybody that doesn't like him, for what reasons they don't like him, will never see any improvement. I'm seeing it. But remember, this is what, four and a half years in wrestling? Maybe six by now? Depending upon when he really started in, I think, what, 2018? Yeah. And so he's, I would say in wrestling, he'd be like 13. If he was a person growing up, his experience, he'd be a 13-year-old. He and, has- and I ask anyone out there, at the age of 13, what did you know? You thought you knew stuff, but you mm-hmm. didn't know. Then you get older and you think back to who you was at 13. You're like, man, I knew nothing. And you watch other 13-year-olds, and what do you think? Y'all don't know anything. Y'all almost look down at them. Like, y'all ain't even human. <laughs> Damn. I think you know something. You don't know life. You don't know what people got to go through. That's terrible. It's... He's got his set. List. You know, but he got his own stuff. That we- <laughs> Nobody knows where that's from. Nobody. Nobody. If you know where that's from, you, get you know where he got his own ways. Maybe you were late. You know, if you know where that's from, oh man, I don't know. I have to, I'm, I'm going to do something for you. I don't know. But you get an e cookie. 
get an e cookie. We're just doing e cookies. All right. All right. Um, but he he's got his list of uh, of moves that he does, and it's like if you're gonna have a, a set list of moves that you do, have them be something that somebody wants to see. I know it's simple. I like to see Solo Sokoa do a hip toss. Yeah, he got a Samoan drop. Do it well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I w- Solo would do. G- okay, y'all. It's hey. wrestling. Hip toss. A knee drop to the shoulder. A knee drop to the ribs. You know, kick the thigh some. Pick the leg up. Kick the thigh. You know, sit him up from the hip toss. Break your hands over his eyes a little bit. Do some heel stuff. Heel work. Wrestling as a heel is easy. Yes. A strategic thumb to the eye. You know, a kick to the balls. And numbers, B- drag bite him, bite him on face, the eyebrow or something. Bite. You know. Talk shit to the random person in the crowd. Yeah, you go to the roast and put me like, you need to shut up before I come down there and bust you in your head. Yeah. And the person be like, well, come on in. And then you get hit in the back of the head. They be like, ah, you got hit. Something. But no, he's got his set list of stuff that he did. Look, man. All of them do if all, if all you can make is toast, that toast might be the best damn toast that anybody ever make. With butter and glitter and rainbows. If that's all you can make. You have no excuse for it to not be good, right? Toast so good, you make you want, make you want to reproduce with it. His toast is not that good. Well, you know, it comes out. It's not, it hasn't changed color. It's just <laughs> what it is. It's just firm. It's just w- warm, firmish bread. <laughs> see, I get what you, where you're coming from. I understand. I do get it. But, you know, you probably got to graduate to that. Graduate to putting oomph on stuff? It take if you are not ready if you okay he got his work you got to get good at working you got to get good at it. he just been some until literally literally until recently so was a co has just been you in the background and you take a beating and you don't win anything that's it you in the background you got the Samoan spike you got maybe the Samoan drop maybe and then that's it and to look menacing that's all you got and he had to go from, remember, remember, your mom got injured, right? Yeah. And you're young, right? Yeah. You had to go from doing absolutely nothing to doing almost everything, right? Yeah. It took you some time to get there, didn't it? Yeah. That's what we're going through. He literally went from, okay, this is going on. It's like, yeah, well, you know, Roman, he's going to do this, and we need to come up with something because there's going to be a thing that's going down. And The Rock flubbed so much crap, so solo had to take the spot that The Rock was going to be in. There you go. He's thrown into a situation that he had no idea he would have to even be in. Now he's got to work with something he, he mentally he ain't, he won't prepare for that. It was supposed to be Roman and The Rock and some mass family split thing and no. No. The Rock had go starting to get go home heat no matter how popular he was. It was like you go to the arena, yay, you're amazing. And online, we can't stand this dude. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. That's why I can give Solo a pass. You know? And I'm not gonna hold my breath for three years. But I say in three years, if he hasn't improved, you know, I can honestly say, you know what? I don't know if I can watch WWE at that point because y'all had three years to help this dude do something else and he ain't done anything else. And sometimes, even if you only got that set of moves and that's all you do, it's how you deliver those moves. Mm -hmm. It's also the talk that leads up to the match. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in pro wrestling. In pro wrestling, there's people that had only two moves, but you thought they had the greatest matches ever for them just because... Of the, the the emotion behind it, so it's it's all about presentation. Yeah, I'm giving I'm giving him a chance. You giving him all the slack you can give. Yeah. You know we give our she, daughter 14. I can't just be like I can't believe you ain't trying to become a doctor right now, 
Or wh why are you not a high priced lawyer? You, <laughs> you saw, you, you, you heard us talk about law and order once. Talked about that commercial that we didn't like. Why didn't you jump in, 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 in into being a lawyer? Why didn't you, why didn't you go to school? What's wrong with you? Yeah, 12 to 14. You, why you fail your life? <laughs> like, no, I ain't no 15 and up. You, you done. You had your chance. You might as well go out there and live in the box cars. You through. The box cars. We ain't that far from the train tracks. Go on. Get your stick, tie it up in a bandana, whatever they put in those things, and go on. <laughs> so give, give Solo Sakura some time. Give him some time. That's all I'm asking. You know? If, you, uh, if this is the McDonald's or quick service restaurant and y'all don't know how to hit them buttons, I want onions. Well, that's the onion button where it says onion. Let me go ahead and just not touch that. I'm like, I don't know what that was, but you got to go. <laughs> like Nia Jax, hey, don't hurt the wrestlers. I'm going to just drop on with all my weight. You know, you got to go. You, well, if you fire me, you're going to get fired because, you know, my cousin ain't going to like that. It's like, oh, crap. So, yeah, at least Solo is trying, and you can see it. Give him some, give him some time. You know? Okay, it, it must be my non-expert eyes. I'm looking at it from a fan and someone that knows a little bit. He's got his Christian down. Let's put it that way. Okay. At he, least he ain't company hopping. He, 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 he is working the Christian to do the move and walk around. He's got that down to an absolute science. <laughs> and look, I'm not trying to say, look, it's all about Solo and I'm just this advocate of Solo and he's great. No. I know where he's starting from, and I'm just saying, give him a chance. If y'all could, somebody could at least talk him into dyeing his hair black again. If his hair was dyed black and he had a thin red streak on the on the side that is the mohawk, that would be cool. One you know. thin dyed streak. That would be cool. Somebody told him to get shaped up, and that's good, but he still got that blind. That, come on, man. I don't know what's up with that crap. That's I don't know. If he dyed it a super dark red, that'd be good. If he cut all the hair off his head, that he, would be better. He would look he would look dangerous. Yes. He would look dangerous. I gotta admit, right now, when he's trying to look angry, like he's staring darts into somebody, like, you know, we on th that person's on the stand in the court case and you gotta intimidate him without saying anything. So he's just staring at him like, you know what, man, you, you you ain't going home after this. If you say the wrong thing, you ain't going home. <laughs> and you trying to he's trying to stare at him like that. He looked like a he looks not tough. He looks like a kid that got in trouble. Need he, he, he needs to he, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I see he that. like that kid that got in trouble, but he's trying to look mad about it. Like yeah. he ain't in trouble. Yeah. Like the, the, the cookie wronged me when it got into my mouth. You can't be mad at me. <laughs> it was I'm mad I'm mad at it. You need to be so you see how mad I am? You should sympathize with me. Sympathize. <laughs> That's that's what he looked like right now. So I'm I'm trying to give him some time. You know? But there are just things that can be done. Yes, there until are. Until the extra wrestling wisdom kicks in. This time next year, and I'm not holding my breath, there should be some clear improvement. If he could just change his hair he and somebody get him a tailor-made suit. He had a damn suit. That won't good no, enough for you. No, I didn't say a suit. The difference between a suit off the rack and something that's made to flatter your body type. Okay, look, you saw Tulsa King and you was stuck. No, no, no. I was saying this before Tulsa King. I told you, I, you can go find it. He needs him a tailor-made suit. The way his pants fit on him don't look right. It does. He's got a body type that wants him to be big. He's fighting against it. He needs to get his pants cut a certain way. Okay, I see what you're saying. He needs to get his jacket cut a certain way and get the uh, the, the the underline, no underneath t-shirt. He ain't making that level of money yet. He's a top guy. The uptown because of his suit does not cost that much. Why don't I have one? Do you want to wear a suit to sit there and talk on the microphone? Well, if I look professional, people will take me serious. That's bull. Why? Because you just saying that because I'm not on camera? 
N- no, because you can be professional and be sitting in your underwear. Yeah. And they'll never know. Well, they know now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> My point is, he's trying to dress like the leader of this group. Okay, cool. Color scheme, fine. Clothing choice, not fine. He got like, I don't know what's up with them shoes. He just he needed a whole he needed a whole makeover. And his makeover, if he could start off with getting rid of that blonde hair, he's a look more dangerous. If he cut that hair off though, he would he would look like a murderer. Hey. And that's about what you need. That's the type of group that he's trying to have. Yes. He needs to look he needs to look worse than Jacob Fatu. He does. Because Jacob Fatu looked like he just I don't know, just it, it, if he ordered a sandwich wrong, he's going to just kill Solo and take over. He looks like, Jacob looks like the one that is not to be messed with. And honestly, Sakura looks like the damn butler. Leading in, them, in comparison. Leading yes. them into the room. So we introduce them to who's about to be killed. Solo, <laughs> Solo looks like an intelligent boss trying to look crazy. And it's not working. Because with, with Jacob behind him, Jacob looks like the guy that's pushing the henchman forward. It looks like Jacob would be, if you didn't know Jack about Jack, you'd be like, okay, that dude, Jacob, he's clearly the leader. And I guess that's the flunky in the red shirt with the, 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 the red lay. I guess it's like, that's the one that dies first. <laughs> yeah, he's, that's he's what red, it, if you don't know, red shirt from Star Trek. if you don't know anything from anything, that's what it looked like. And if anybody listen to this and be like, man, you just hating on how he look and shaming. No, I'm not shaming. It's not shaming the way some, the, the outer appearance makes a difference. The rock would not have become the rock without the sunglasses and his $500 shirt. If it was that much. Well, however much it cost, that's what he called it. He would never would have became what is now known forevermore as The Rock if he had not slipped into that persona. If he was still Rocky my view, just happy to be alive, it never would have happened. Nope. You got to find yourself. Yes. Solo and is just over 30 years old, and he's thrown into a situation that... Literally, he would have the chops properly for if he had started wrestling when he was 18 to 21 with all of these years and development and figure out who he really is. Like, as a human, outside of this, he knows who he is. And in wrestling, you got to be able to say, this is me revved up or this isn't me at all, but I can keep them separate. Yeah. That's, that's hard. It, can, it can get damn hard. And sometimes if you look the part, it makes it easier to be the part. And he's just not looking it yet. But I think in time, he'll get there. I hope so. I think in time, he'll get there or they'll find something else. But they're doing the best they can with what they got. And I'm going to give Solo a chance. Like, there's, there's empathy. There's empathy. If I was in this situation, I want someone to give me a chance. Give some help. That's, that's all I'm saying. So I hope I hope this one, this is a long one, but I let it go long and I wanted to go long because we haven't done this in a while and we just talked about a whole bunch of random stuff out in, in mainly Solo Sokoa and whatnot. But hey, that's going to do it for us. We got some gaming to get to and stuff to talk about uh, that's not wrestling related. Um, but we might do another one tomorrow or later on tonight because you all work. This is Wednesday, right? Yeah, I have no idea what happened to Tuesday. There's stuff to be done. So <laughs> this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on Friday night Smackdown ish. And with that, we want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe, so we can see you next time. Oh, nobody else takes that because I, I like that. That's my outro. That's my thing. Yeah. Peace.